So we found a way of solving linear congruences, and so the natural question to ask is, can we solve any congruence, ax congruent to b mod n? And the answer is, no. For example, let's consider the congruence 4x congruent to 1 mod 18. So let's try our Diophantine method on this congruence. If 4x is congruent to 1 mod 18, then we know that 4x is equal to a multiple of 18 plus 1. Solving this for x gives us, and splitting our fraction into a part that reduces and leftovers gives us, and if we want x to be a whole number and y to be a whole number, then it's necessary that 2y plus 1 over 4 is also a whole number. And so we'll introduce a new variable for this fractional part. We'll call this z and then solve for y. And then we'll split our fraction into a part that reduces and a part that doesn't. And so we get y equal to 2z minus 1 half. And at this point, we're in trouble. Because if z is an integer, y can't be. Because y is 2 times an integer minus 1 half. And that will keep it from being an integer. No problem, you say. Maybe z isn't an integer. Well, there is a problem here. If z is not an integer, remember that z is 2y plus 1 over 4. So if z is not an integer, then neither is 2y plus 1 over 4, so x won't be an integer. And what this means is that 4x congruent to 1 mod 18 has no solution. Now let's dig a little bit deeper to see why this happens. So remember that one of the properties of congruences is that if a is congruent to b mod n, then a minus b is divisible by n. So in order for 4x to be congruent to 1 mod 18, we must have 4x minus 1 divisible by 18. But since 18 is even, it can't divide an odd number, so 4x minus 1 must also be even. But 4x is even, so 4x minus 1 can't be. Can we generalize this? Could we solve 3x congruent to 1 mod 18? Again, the way we might look at it is we need 3x minus 1 to be divisible by 18. And notice that anything divisible by 18 is also divisible by 3. But since 3x is divisible by 3, then 3x minus 1 can't be because it's 1 less than a number divisible by 3. And so it follows that 3x minus 1 can't be divisible by 18 either, and this problem is unsolvable. And this leads to the following very important result. The congruence ax congruent to 1 mod n can be solved if and only if a and n have no common factors. So let's solve, if possible, 25x congruent to 1 mod 35. And since 25 and 35 have a common factor, this is unsolvable. Now you have to be careful with theorems because you have to read the fine print. So let's solve, if possible, 25x congruent to 5 mod 35. So you might say, well, 25 and 35 have a common factor, and a theorem says that this problem is unsolvable. But you got to read the fine print. And unlike cell phone contracts, theorems don't have microscopic fine print. It's all out in the open. And in this particular case, the theorem only applies to the congruence ax congruent to 1. But we're not solving 25x congruent to 1. 
we're solving 25x congruent to 5. And so the theorem is inapplicable. And so we have to do something else to solve this congruence or to determine whether this congruence is unsolvable. Well, let's think about this. If we had 25x equal to 5, we could divide both sides by 5 to get 5x equals 1. Could we do the same thing here and get 25x over 5 congruent to 5 over 5, which is the same as 5x congruent to 1 mod 35, and then conclude that this is unsolvable? Well, maybe. Well, maybe. Here's a good gauge of whether or not we should stop here. Are you willing to throw money down on the table and lose it if you're not right? If you have the slightest hesitation, there's probably more to this problem. So let's try to solve this problem using our Diophantine method. If 25x is congruent to 5 mod 35, then 25x is 5 more than a multiple of 35. And since this is an equation, we can do all the things we can normally do with an equation. So let's solve this for x. And because our interest is in whole number solutions, we'll split our numerator into a part divisible by 25 and a remainder. And after simplification, we get that x is equal to y plus 10y plus 5 over 25. Well, we want 10y plus 5 over 25 to be a whole number, so we'll make that a new variable z and solve for y. And, again, we'll split our numerator into a part that's divisible by 10 and leftovers. And so y is equal to 2z plus 5z minus 5 over 10. Again, we want this fractional part to be a whole number, so let's make the new variable and solve for z. And then split our fraction into a part that reduces and a part that doesn't. And so z is equal to 2w plus 1. And so now, if w is a whole number, so is z, and so is y, and so is x. So if we let w equal 0, we find that z is equal to... one, and y is equal to two, and x is equal to three, and so x equals three solves this congruence. And it's worth going back to our original idea that because both 25 and 5 are divisible by 5, we thought we might be able to divide both sides by 5 and get an unsolvable congruence. But in fact, we were able to solve the congruence. And this brings to mind a very important rule. Never divide when working mod n.